Hi friends, welcome. My name is Baron, and this is my channel where I talk about book stuff. I'm the book Baron. <laughs> welcome in. Today I wanted to talk about some forced proximity. I think <laughs> after editing several videos of myself, I think I've said some version of, ooh, this has yummy forced proximity in about half of my videos. It's something that I really like. I like when my female main characters and my main male characters are spending a lot of time together because I like seeing their dynamic. I like seeing them work through troubles. I think it just makes it a lot more interesting seeing a full scope of really what they're like together. And the other thing too, it just encompasses a ton ton of different tropes like arranged marriage, marriage of convenience, road trips, workplace. I've tried to kind of pick a little bit of a variety of things because there are way more books that I could put on this list. I'm trying to put some ones that I don't see pop up as often, at least recently anyway. Some of these are some old favorites, so that's a long-winded way to say we're going to be talking about forced proximity today, folks. Just going to get my notes here. Okay, so first up we have Hail Mary by Candy Steiner. Most of Candy Steiner books have some element of first proximity in them, I would argue, but this one happens to be my absolute all-time fave of hers. This is part of her Red Zone Rival series. It's interconnected standalones, meaning you can read this completely on its own and you're not really missing out. This is on KU, so if you have a KU subscription, it's right at your fingertips. It's new adult college football romance. I love the main characters in this book so much. So we have Mary, and the thing that I thought was really fun and unique about her with this book was that although this is new adult, Mary's not going to college. I love seeing that representation there. She's not going to college. She lives near the campus and specifically she lives really close to the football house called The Pit. But she is apprenticing tattoo artist. It's something she's wanted to do her whole life. She's a gamer, but she's a little hard up on money. She Her parents aren't very supportive. And so when a pipe breaks in her home, this is disaster for her. She doesn't have anywhere else to go. Leo Hernandez, who is one of the football players, that lives across the street has had his eye on her. He really likes her, but for some reason she's so prickly with him. But he steps in and says, hey, you know what? You can come stay with us. You can stay for free until this pipe gets fixed. So the forced proximity here is roommates. But Mary has a little secret. Her and Leo have known each other prior to being neighbors and he doesn't remember her. I'll leave it there. Very fun because you have the dynamic of not only them being roommates, but there's other roommates in the house that have their own banter. And I just liked that there was a new adult book that was not actually about someone in college. I thought that was kind of refreshing. So that is Hail Mary. Keeping in the theme of men that don't remember stuff, Forget Me Not by QB Tyler. This one I felt like I saw go around a lot more, like maybe a couple years ago on booktube, but it's one of my favorites from QB. This is a standalone that's on KU, so there's no interconnected books at all here. It's covering marriage and trouble, and the forced proximity has to do with um, helping someone who is recovering from injury. We have amnesia. I know that's not everybody's favorite trope. I love amnesia, so I think I'm definitely <laughs> the minority with that one. One thing I will warn you is there is cheating involved in this book. I know that that's something that a lot of people don't like, so I'll give you a heads up. If you don't like that, that is in here. But we have Olivia, who has been called to the bedside of her ex-husband, and she's like, why am I here? I know that he's been injured, but why didn't you call his girlfriend? In speaking with him, realizes that he does not remember that they got divorced. In fact, he has a massive hole in his memory that spans conveniently the amount of time that was their divorce and, and breakup. Bennett, though, still needs help. He believes he's still married to this woman, so he asks her to help him with the recovery process. And so we have them living together. We've got forced proximity through that. This was one of my first QB books, and I just love Marriage and Trouble, or I guess this is a little bit more... <laughs> in the vein of second chance romance, but I just love Marriage and Trouble because um, interesting just to see people work out those problems. Next up, I have something from Elsie Silver, but I'm not going to be recommending something from the Chestnut Spring series, solid series, but the series I actually prefer, I know, controversial opinion here, is her Gold Rush Ranch series. And specifically, my favorite is The Front Runner. I know, it's the third book in this series. Again, it's on KU, it's small town. I think it's marketed as enemies 
to lovers, but I would argue that it's more rivals to lovers. And there's horses involved because it's Elsie Silver. We have Stefan Dalka, who has been kind of the villain of the series. He's bought his way into the racing industry and he's made some questionable decisions, some questionable hires. So we know that he's not a guy that's on the up and up. He's a little morally gray. He's done a few things that have been directed at the Gold Rush Ranch folks, so they don't like him at all. But there's a circumstance that comes up. He is in a pinch. One of his horses needs some immediate vet care, and so he calls the Gold Rush Ranch at Mira. Mira is not as, doesn't have as tense of a dynamic with uh, Stefan as the others, and eventually they find out that there's a circumstance at the Gold Rush Ranch that can be solved with the help of Stefan. And freeze frame. Um, so I forgot the best part. So in exchange for Stefan's help with this little issue, Mira has to go on three fake dates with him. And that's where we get the majority of the force proximity. And it's also like the best part of the book. I don't know how I miss that. Anyways, uh, back to my normal stuff. So we have our force proximity because they are needing to work together. If there is a villain redemption arc in a series, it's typically my favorite book. Also, I love a blonde hero. I will not apologize for that preference. Next up, we have The Outhouse by Devney Perry. I see a lot of her other series get recommended, but I always feel like this one kind of gets left out. It's part of the Jameson Valley series. It's on KU once again. Actually, I think all of these are on KU. It's small town romantic suspense, but we have Sabrina. She's an investigative journalist and this puts her into some trouble. So in order to escape and preserve her safety, she decides to go to Montana where she's got a friend, I think from college, that lives there. She approaches this friend and is like, please help me. My life is quite literally in danger. I need to hide. So her friend gets her in contact with a ranger in the area who says, I'm going to bring you to this outpost in the middle of nowhere. There is no cell service. It's very off the grid. Nobody goes up there, especially this time of year. So she will be safe for a while while everything kind of simmers down back home. That local ranger is Bo. Bo is through and through a woodsman. He loves his small town. He enjoys the simple pleasures of life. He likes going hiking. And Sabrina, she's a city girl. So going to this outpost is very rough for her. But despite their immense differences, they start falling for one another because they are having to work together. Bo has to bring her food and he's really her lifeline to the outside world. So lots of forced proximity through that. Next up, we have sort of a classic for me. We have Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is once again on KU. It's part of her Brutal Birthright series. This is the second book, but you can read all of these once again as a standalone. Reading Brutal Prince does give you some, just like a touch of additional context setting this book up, but you don't need to read it in order to appreciate what this book is. So this is more of an enemies to lovers, captor captive, good girl, bad boy. And then we have some mafia as well. So before I get started on this, we're going to do like a tiny, like little baby Polish lesson. I've seen a lot of people get really intimidated by the hero of this book's name. So I'm going to help you all out. When you break it down phonetically with the Polish alphabet, the what looks like an L slash, that is pronounced as a W and the J is pronounced as an I or a Y. This is how I would write it if I was using the English alphabet. It's Mikolaj. Just a little fun fact for you. So we have Mikolaj or you can call him Miko. Miko is the head of the Braterstwo, which is, it means brotherhood in Polish. It's the mafia. It's the Bratva. His father figure was murdered by the Irish mafia in the area, which is headed up by Nessa's family. She's going to be our heroine for this. Now, Nessa's not really involved in any of the family's comings and goings. She doesn't really know what's going on. She's the youngest sibling. She's doing her own thing. She's doing ballet. She's going to college, completely striking up her own path. This does leave her a little vulnerable because she doesn't know how to protect herself as well as some of her siblings, which also happens to make her the perfect target for Miko's revenge. He ends up kidnapping her. Lots of forced proximity because they are literally being forced to live together. This is one of my favorite series of all time. Sophie Lark's writing is really easy to get into. And honestly, there isn't a ton of like blood gut gore type of things in here. So if you're starting to get into dark romance or want to start exploring some mafia romances, I would say 
you that this series is actually a pretty solid place to start. That's Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. In the same vein, we have Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. So this is a standalone spinoff from some of her other mafia romances. I know that Cora Riley has written quite a few. I think she has a couple different series actually. I haven't read any of them. So once again, like the rebel I am, I've read this entirely as a standalone. Once again, we are on KU. This is an arranged marriage mafia story. And there's a huge age gap here too. So Cassio has lost his wife, which means now he has to care for two young children. As many things are in the mafia about duty and not about choice and love, he decides that he needs a wife. And so he's going to have an arranged marriage. So obviously this means there needs to be something advantageous about the marriage for this to work. So he ends up being arranged with Julia, who's very young. I think she's late teens, maybe early 20s. She is now supposed to be the mother of these two young kids. So she's very quickly like, this is not the kind of marriage I was expecting to be in. I knew I wouldn't have a lot of choices, but I thought it would be a little bit more loving and exciting to be married. So she decides that she's going to push back on Cassio's duty and traditional ways and really try and forge this happy family that she's always envisioned for herself. This is another one. Actually, I would say that this one is probably an even better spot to start if you're looking to get into darker romances or mafia. This has very little violence and very little to do with the mafia. It's really primarily about Julia with the kids and trying to interact with Cassio despite him trying to be big old boss man for the mafia. Next up, I have a fantasy romance for you. It's Feather by Olivia, Olivia Wildenstein? 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 I don't know how to pronounce. Apologies if I've mispronounced that. Guess I'll just get to be embarrassed about that later. This is kind of like a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Fantasy, it does have some light mafia elements, billionaire, and it takes place in France. So a little bit of change in scenery from some of the other books I've been talking about, which are, I think, all in the US. Lee needs to earn enough feathers in order to ascend to Elysium. She's angel type being. And she's running up against a deadline because she's trying to catch the eye of someone who's already ascended. And there's like a set amount of time that they have in order to earn their feathers just generally as well. So she decides that she's going to pick one of the toughest sinners, a triple, in order to ascend more quickly. That'll give her enough feathers. That's all great, but a triple means they are the worst of the worst. They are the hardest to reform. There's a reason that they're worth so many points or so many feathers. Our sinner here is Jared. He is the head of the Parisian mafia, and he is determined to sully her through his charms while she tries to save him. Got some interesting tension going on there. So we have lots of forced proximity because because, you know, Lee's got to save his soul. She's got to be up in his business all the time. I know that there's a couple things that might bug some people, so I'm going to call them out real quick. Um, Lee, because she is an angel, she's a bit naive, and she is virginal. So just a heads up with that if that's not something that you like. Next up, we have The Dark King by Gina L. Maxwell. This is an incomplete series at this point. It is on KU. I think The Rebel King just came out somewhat recently, which is the second book. So this is an accidentally married in Vegas fantasy romance. Brynn is kind of falling on some hard times. She's had some issues at her job recently, but conveniently she has just won in a giveaway a trip to Vegas, all inclusive. For her, she's like, great timing. I just need to relax. You know, life's been kind of hard for me lately. But after a martini fueled night, she wakes up married to Caden, who happens to be the owner of this hotel and is also Faye royalty who rules beyond the veil in Vegas. Fortunately for her, there's more than just marriage trapping her because we've got some fantasy elements in there. There's some rules that are going on and it's really Aiden's life on the line. I don't want to say too much more. One thing I'll say, I have seen people compare this book to Akatar for some reason. It's nothing like Akatar. Please don't go in thinking that. It's a dark urban fantasy. It's nothing like Akatar. And my last one for you, we have Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. This is once again on KU. I think the audio is available on KU as well. So if you prefer to consume it that way, it's available. We have an ex-hockey player. We've got a famous actress, a damaged hero who's dealing with some, some issues that I'll get into in just a second. Emma's a very beloved actress on a very popular TV show and she finds out that in the latest season she is quite literally getting the axe. She is absolutely devastated. This has been her family. This has been her job for so many years and now it's just all gone because they've decided to write her off. She decides that she's going to lick her wounds which is how she finds herself at Rosemont which is this gorgeous estate in California. This 
is run by an elderly woman who also happens to be our hero's grandmother. And that hero's name is Lucian. So he is also there because he's had a little bit of a career bust himself. He was playing hockey, but unfortunately he suffered a very severe injury, which has caused prolonged issues for him and has resulted in him having to retire. So they're both really trying to heal from the trajectory of their lives really changing quite dramatically. And they're in very close proximity. They're basically neighbors, but it's more than that because they're eating in the same areas. They're swimming in the same pools. There's a skinny dipping scene that's very sexy. And it's called Make It Sweet because Lucian loves to bake. This one, I hadn't really heard anyone talk about it on book in my corner of booktube. I just, it was just such a fun surprise when I picked that up and just really ended up enjoying it. I could go on and on about forced proximity. I think it's one of the best tropes. Like I said, it just makes for some fun scenarios that your characters get into. That's what I've got for you today. So don't forget to like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. Leave a comment if you want to chat about any of these books. Have you read any of them? Are there additional ones that you want to recommend that fall into this trope? Because so many different tropes can be encompassed in this one trope. And it's my favorite. So if you have recommendations for me, put them down there. With that, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye.